Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna show you how I built this automated home theater in my family room that sets itself up or hides itself away at the touch of a single button. I wouldn't say that I live in a small house by any means, but I also don't have a whole room that I can devote to a home theater. And even if I did, I'm not sure that's what I would use the extra space for. That said, I love movies and watching them on a projector just feels different than a TV. So I wanted to add a projector and a screen to my existing space that's already jam-packed with my desk, my daughter's desk, and a TV and a couch. Oh, and I wanted it to blend in completely when it's not in use, so no projector hanging from the ceiling and no loose wiring and definitely no screen on the wall. Also, I wanted the setup to be completely automated, making it possible to seamlessly switch from watching the TV to watching the projector with the push of a single button. So let's talk about how I did it. The screen was the first part of the puzzle, and because I didn't want it to be visible all the time, my two options were to mount it in the ceiling, which I admit would have been awesome, but a little bit out of my comfort zone, or to get a floor rising screen, which was much easier to install and use. I ended up with a 120 inch motorized ambient light rejecting screen or ALR screen from VividStorm that comes in a bunch of different screen styles depending on which projector type you're using. The most effective ambient light rejecting screen materials are the ones that are used specifically for ultra short throw projectors. And it basically works because the light from an ultra short throw comes from an extreme low angle. This means that it's possible to engineer the screen material to only reflect the light back that comes from below and reject any light that comes from other angles like from your ceiling lights or from your windows. These types of screens are called optical ALR and they only work with ultra short throw projectors. There are also ALR screens that work for standard throw projectors called contrast based ALR, but those essentially work by lowering the overall brightness of the image by a specific amount, which helps cancel out any less concentrated light. Because of my YouTube channel, this screen is going to be pulling double duty as a screen for entertainment, but also for testing a full range of different projector types. So I opted for a contrast based ALR screen instead of one designed specifically for ultra short throw projectors. But if you are interested in that, here's a sample of the difference that you could expect during the day and during the night for a contrast-based versus optical ALR material versus pure white. The casing for the VividStorm screen is made out of black metal, which might have been fine by itself, but I wanted it to blend in just a little bit better, so I built a wooden cover for it and stained it to match the rest of my entertainment unit. After mounting the screen to the top of my existing furniture, you can see that I was able to position the screen so that it's far enough back to be out of the way, but it still clears my wall-mounted TV on the way up and down. This motorized projector screen comes with its own remote, which luckily uses the standard RF433 protocol, so it's really easy to automate using an off-the-shelf solution like a Broadlink RM Pro or Sonoff RF Bridge, which then enables you to add it to your Amazon Echo or Google Home devices. If a separate bridge is too much hassle or you don't already have a home automation hub, you could also get an accessory plug from VividStorm that monitors the power draw of your projector to figure out when it's on or off and then raises or lowers the screen accordingly. I'll talk more about my specific automations in Home Assistant later on in this video though. Next was the projector, and an ultra short throw projector was definitely the way to go for me since I wanted a completely out of the way setup with no ceiling mounts or visible cables. However, something that most people don't seem to be talking about when it comes to ultra short throw projectors is that even though they can make a large screen from a short distance, it's not an infinitely short distance, and most of the time it's going to require you to pull your furniture away from the wall to get the size of screen you want. You can see that even in the official installation video for the Epson LS500, they needed to pull the entertainment console over 16 inches off the wall just for a 100 inch screen. So it's gonna to need to be even further than that for a 120 inch screen. This is gonna be compounded even further by the fact that my screen isn't mounted to the wall, but instead sits about six and a half inches away from it. Meaning my projector is gonna be sitting about two feet off the wall. And that definitely wasn't gonna fly with me. So a motorized shelf seemed like an obvious solution. If you're not into DIY, you can actually buy furniture with one of these projector slides built in for the low, low price of $16,260, or you can get just the shelf for $2,600. But both of those were well out of my price range. So I built one for about $150. If you're interested in making one of these shelves yourself, make sure you're subscribed because a full how-to video for that is coming up in about a week. But basically, I used full extension drawer slides paired with some 3D printer parts to create a sturdy motorized drawer that always pulls out to the exact same point so I don't have to mess with projector angles and keystoning every time I want to use my projector. Also, because the projector I'm using, the XGME Aura, has a dedicated focus button on the remote, I can program different stop points corresponding with different screen sizes and adjust the focus right on the remote. Speaking of the projector, the Aura from XGME will probably be the replacement for my Epson LS300, which I've decided to sell after figuring out I was never going to be able to play my Nintendo Switch on it due to the unbearable screen latency. 
Mario Kart was maybe tolerable, but platformers like Ultimate Chicken Horse were completely unplayable due to input lag. XGMe sent me this review unit of their ultra short throw projector, the Aura, to test out, and not only does it have 4K resolution and just better performance in general, but it only has a slightly higher MSRP and it has a dedicated gaming mode that reduces input lag so much that I can't tell the difference between it and my LG OLED TV. It also addresses my wife's biggest issue with the Epson LS300, which was the high fan noise when using anything over 75 brightness. When compared to the LS300, the fan in the XGME Aura is basically silent at any brightness. Unfortunately, I do need to send this projector back to XGME when I'm done testing it, but so far it's got absolutely everything I could want and is currently at the top of my list for replacing the Epson LS300. Both the Aura and the LS300 run Android TV, so after enabling development tools, they can be easily added to Home Assistant to monitor their state. This means that I can automate the motorized shelf and the screen based on whether the projector is on or off. A simple automation watches for the state of the projector and if it goes from off, which Home Assistant sees as unavailable, to any other state, then Home Assistant sends the RF command for the projector screen and the correct position command to the motorized drawer. The opposite automation watches for the projector to turn off and then rolls down the projector screen and closes the drawer. The next thing I wanted to tackle was the video signal, and as I said, the goal was to be able to start watching something on the TV and then be able to seamlessly switch to the projector without stopping or starting apps, changing interfaces, or using different remotes. Just one button and you're done. To accomplish this, I'm using an HDMI splitter that was recommended by Chris over at Majestech, the GoFanco Prophecy. The wiring looks like this. Since I only use two devices in my house, either the Apple TV for watching shows or the Nintendo Switch for playing games, I run each of those devices into the soundbar and then out of the soundbar into a single HDMI cable that goes into the splitter, which then outputs up to four split signals. I'm using one of those outputs for the TV and one for the projector. This is also my preferred setup instead of using an audio return channel because I know that the sound is going to come through exactly how I expect without having to configure my audio return channel to use different HDMI versions or pass-through modes. Also, since I got the four-channel GoFenco Prophecy, I had an extra HDMI out, so I used that to run Hyperion on a Raspberry Pi to have the Ambilight effect, which takes whatever's happening on the TV screen and it replicates it on the TV bias lighting LEDs for a more immersive experience. The GoFanco is perfect for this because it automatically downsamples 4K to 1080p and converts HDR to SDR, so the capture card on the Raspberry Pi doesn't need to. If you're interested in a full walkthrough of Hyperion setup, I'd recommend the tutorials from either Chris at Majestic or Lewis over at Everything Smart Home. Both of them are great and will get you up and running in no time. Speaking of LEDs, I'm using a newer kind of addressable LED strip both behind the TV and projector screen, 12 volt SK6812 RGBW strips. The upside to using 12 volt is you don't need any power ejection to keep color accuracy, and because they're RGBW strips, they produce a nice true white when not in RGB mode. Unlike the 5 volt SK6812s, these are controlled in groups of three, so your animations won't be quite as high resolution, but in practice, because they're being used for indirect light shined onto the wall, you can't really tell the difference. Sound was the last part of the puzzle, and something that I've really struggled with. I know there's a whole group of people out there that are gonna tell me that a sound bar is never gonna give proper sound for a home theater, but even though they might be right, I really don't want to believe them. Last year, I got a killer open box deal at Best Buy on Samsung's Q90R high-end soundbar, sub, and surround sound speakers. And I'd love to tell you that they're great, but in my experience, they're mostly just okay. There is a custom integration to add it to Home Assistant, which works most of the time, but overall, my experience with it has been pretty lackluster, and I'm not sure I'd recommend it to anybody. I've been thinking about trying out the Sonos Arc, but the price of the soundbar, surround sound speakers, and sub is holding me back. Let me know down in the comments if you have a better solution that won't look super out of place in my main living room. Aside from the less than perfect audio, overall I am extremely happy with the outcome of my stealthy automated theater room, and I'm more than happy to share my experiences with any of the devices that I showed here today, so feel free to ask your questions in the comment sections. As I said, I'm working on a video right now with a full how-to for building the motorized shelf, but building it in a way that's easy to replicate and modify with limited tools, limited coding, and no 3D printer has taken a little bit longer than expected. I'll probably have that video done in about a week though, so make sure that you're subscribed if you're interested in that. Thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If this video gave you some ideas about your own home theater setup, please hit the thumbs up button so the YouTube algorithm knows it's a good video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.